On this episode of Sit Down Saturday, we have world champion Felix Albeck. Hi. <laughs> and we're going to watch his uh, race in, from the world short course in the 43 where he became world champion. So, uh, let's get into it. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Felix, what was the call room like before the race? Um, I think the call room was quite good. Um, I actually didn't really focus that much on it anymore. I have to say the call room at the Olympics was much more tense. So mm -hmm. um, having that experience going into that call room, I knew what I could expect and kind of like what can happen and just try to focus on myself and get ready for my race. Okay. Would you know, would you have the similar experience? Uh, well, it was my first world final as me. And, uh, no, I was very nervous. <laughs> okay, uh, I, when you were walking out, you give a big wave. Were you excited to get into the race or, oh, could you hear the crowd? Yeah, so that was the first final of those world championships as well. Um, starting with the 400 freestyle. So we were like the first ones going out and getting to experience it for the first time. What is pretty cool because no one else has really done it at that meet before. And yeah, I think I have my pretty like a very standard routine when I go out. Um, try to focus on myself, look at the blocks and then like wave to my teammates on the stands. And yeah. then pretty much get ready for my race. Can you hear your teammates shouting for you? Yeah. That's me. good. <laughs> uh we were would you say you were like really relaxed before like chilled out ready to go um, or were you like hyped up and like i think i had like the right balance of being really excited for the race but not being stressed out about the race so i was okay. nervous uh, i think it's always good to be nervous before a race mm -hmm. because then you can perform the best but being that nervous should not become anxious so yeah. um, i was nervous and excited so okay. it's like the best way for me to perform well mm -hmm. all right We'll get into the race then, I guess. So, Felix taking his top off. <laughs> so, I'm getting ready. Looks relaxed. You look, I thought you looked quite relaxed before. Oh, to me. Like, was there anybody in the race who you thought was going to be the most challenging to beat? Um, I, I think there are like a couple guys in that heat, especially it was so fast to make it back. Yeah. I was like 339 for the eighth place to make it back into finals. Yeah. So, all these times are basically times I think. Uh, who have a chance of making a medal. Uh -huh. uh, we've seen it many times in the 400 free that every single lane can basically make a medal. Uh -huh. So I learned it less than I was really aware of what's going on. So didn't okay. underestimate any of my opponents. Yeah, I just noticed we got um, Kieran Smith on the screen who won the Olympic, I think, silver medal, didn't they? Uh, bronze, bronze medal. Yeah. yeah. Bronze medal. Yeah. It's pretty packed final as well. The only one we was missing was Matthew Sates, I think. Oh, from the short course. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. short course. And the, some of the Americans. Other Americans, yeah, yeah. Uh, pretty packed yeah. anyway. So, Felix and Lane Fall, yeah. yeah. <laughs> As Brett Hawk said, the pale one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I know we love a good, quick reaction time stat, so it was 0.75. So, I don't know, I was out of that you really care about the reaction time. I, I think reaction time. <laughs> It, it is quite slow compared to the rest of the field, Yeah. but I already had way slower ones as well. So I think yeah. I'm already in my fast part of the erection time, mm -hmm. Yeah. but definitely more space to get better in there. So I think when I started out my first finals, yeah. because I was so nervous, yeah. uh, kind of like you missed the signal, I was like 0 0.85, 0 0.86. So 0 0.75 is already good progress, but it would be <laughs> great to be under 0.7. Yeah. yeah. <gasps> so you are, you're, it looks like you're going to turn last. Second last session, yeah. Were you just comfortable here? I think that the first part of the race is my weakest part. Yeah. Uh, I know I have the slowest speed going out, um, but I think this was the first time I ever felt like I was quite in the race already at the 50. Okay. So I'm not in the top three, but I think I was not too far off. Yeah. And I think when I get to the 100 turn, um, I'm in third position. Yeah. And it's like the best position I've ever started in a 400 final, being in third. Yeah. And I already knew at that point, like, I was not trying harder to get there, but yeah. it just happened, or like with the work we've done in training to be able to go out faster, but with less energy. Mm -hmm. And yeah, at that point, I knew I will have a really good race. Mm -hmm. So at the 100 point on 52, 6, 5. Yeah. So well, I was going to ask what you felt about the first time, but you told us. You, I think you touched, did you touch third? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I was wondering, so I know we talked about this the other day when we were in Bucks, 
uh, about bobbing up and down. How would you, because I know like a lot of people have the high, what, the hybrid freestyle it's called. And uh, how would you, how do you stop yourself from moving up and down instead of, and just keep and move all your energy going forward? I think uh, what I think about often is not to rush my stroke. I have okay. a really long cycle, so I'll try to get my arms as extended as possible and actually pushing through the entire stroke and uh, leaving the water as far back as I can. Yeah. And I think by doing that, um, you naturally become like really long and don't get into the up and down movement. Mm -hmm. Would you say uh, in your like high catch part, would you catch high in a 400 or depending on what you're doing, would you catch lower? Uh, I think I do catch high. Um, I think I try to keep it as efficient as possible, especially in the first half of the race. Mm -hmm. um, and then for that, you need like a really high catch. Yeah. Okay. So, do you think your turns in this I, race were like a big um, factor for you of like getting distance on other people? I think it was. Um, it was one of my first races where I can really say that. Uh, my turns are not that good yet, but compared to where they have been like a year before or two years before, there has been like a lot of progress. Yeah. So I'm not really losing at the turn anymore. Um, I'm staying the same or even like getting some advantage of other swimmers. Uh -huh. I'm still losing to the fastest uh, turn swimmers, but it's not that uh, big of a difference anymore. What uh, helps a lot with my fast swimming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're in the top two here. I was just thinking this this part is where uh you up your stroke count from one more stroke per length mm. i'm think i was thinking did you see rapsis on the outside uh or is that why or was it the race plan to up it yeah so i was at the 200 and i um was feeling so well barely any pain yet so i was like i can really extend mm -hmm. or push the pace here um like get it get a little bit faster and i was so confident that i can hold it until the end of the race so I really tried push, pushing as much as possible mm -hmm. from uh, 150 from after 150 um, until the 350. <laughs> yeah. I really wanted to break up break my other opponents in the in the middle 200 oh, yeah. and just go as hard as possible. I always find that I don't know if you find this, but in the middle of a race, especially in the 1500, which is my event, uh, last 300 meters is always mentally hard to push out. Do you find that pushing it halfway was hard in case in the back of your mind you're thinking, well, are you going to die? If you know what I mean. um, I, usually I do, but it, especially in this race, I didn't have that feeling because I was still so fresh at the 200. I knew that whatever pace I have to go today, I will be able to go with them as well. Oh, so I was not scared of giving that extra speed early on mm -hmm. with uh, questioning if that is the right moment or not. It's the perfect taper from Andy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we were thinking, I know Rapsis goes out quite hard normally yeah he does when you ever, were you ever thinking when you were with him you were like oh i'm going well here and i feel good <laughs> i've seen a lot of different versions of him uh racing the 400 freestyle i've seen going out really hard i've seen out quite slow and coming back the last hundred uh usually his last 50 is always fast and he has a lot of speed um definitely a great hundred swimmer as well mm -hmm. so when i knew i was at the around where he is in the race at like the 200 250 I knew um, I have to extend my lead at this point because his last 50 will be so good um, okay. that I need to be ready to go uh -huh. uh, really fast early on. Okay. Uh, I was going to ask, so like in training, would you count your strokes to know what paces you're going or would you just count them just to uh, uh, like know how many strokes, just keep it low stroke counts? Yeah, so... Uh, I usually don't really count my strokes during a set or so, uh, or just if we are told to do so, mm -hmm. which I feel like is quite often the case. Um, yeah. I do a lot of distance per stroke sets. And what I always focus on is it also in the race pace sets is just to be as long as possible. Even though when I pick it up and get my rate up, I still want to be as long as possible. Okay. Uh, I was going to say, what do you have any... Well, now we're, well, we'll pass the halfway point. I know he turned the 200 in... Uh, one forty-seven one, which pretty rapid. Yeah, yeah, it's faster both far. Yeah, <laughs> two hundred fifty meters. Um, uh, and and the, that was a fifty-four five split on the second hundred. So I know it's turning into the two fifty. So we'll carry on with the race. Yeah. Great straight man off the walls mm. too. No comment on that. <laughs> I think it's the last one hundred fifty now. Yeah. Yeah. I think Rapsis is only point four behind here, but it did I don't know. It looks he, it looks it looks a lot. 
Like, yeah, yeah. I, think. I think this is like a crucial part of the race because no one wants to go with 150 to go yeah. or yeah. 100 to go, but you really have to commit and go over that edge, uh, especially when you're feeling good and just risk is when you want to win um, because if you don't risk it, like you can still end up with a medal, but the gold medal probably goes a little bit further away from you. Yeah. yeah. So this is my 750 now going from 300 to 150. Yeah. It's and just, I'm speeding up a lot now. Yeah. You drop nearly 0.6 from the last 50 on this 50. And then you start to get a good lead as well on the legs. Yeah, yeah I, I told myself I want to go to 750, like if I would go to the last 50. Yeah. yeah. Um, because I knew they would come back at, at the end really quick, but no one really wants to do it on the 750. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What were you thinking here? Were you thinking, oh, I've got this? I I I, th uh, I remember feeling like this is my race. I'm not giving the, the, this away anymore. Mm -hmm. um, but still, he came yeah. way closer than I wanted him to come <laughs> close. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was just so much pain at this moment. I'm just glad I got it back. Yeah, yeah. it's my favorite part of the race now. <laughs> the celebration. <laughs> Let's see. No. That was like the first moment when I really realized like I won a world championship gold medal because. Um, until this moment before the race I was still thinking about just I want to win this race I want to be the best person I can be in this mm -hmm. race but I wasn't necessarily thinking about um, what medal is on the line or why we are swimming here it was yeah. just I saw it as a different race where I was nervous to go in but kind of like stopped thinking about that gold silver bronze medal which is possible yeah uh, what was your PB going into this uh, 337.4 so oh, okay. big drop yeah so one and a half seconds where what was it before you came to that for um so i didn't do a short course meet as one and three for a long time oh, okay so my best time was from december 2016 which was a 343 okay yeah so that's a seven second drop yeah we uh what what were you thinking? Were you, what what did you like change? The biggest things that you came to Lafra? Do you think, or was it just getting used to swimming short course? I think there are a lot of things. First of all, just getting more mature swimming wise, um, with more races, and also just kind of like plateauing for two or three years and then swimming at best time again. Um, mm -hmm. You can really think that you have done everything at this point yeah. and you know how to react better to certain situations, and then stroke wise, just getting up. Um, more consistent with the stroke and a lot of detail work um, with the starts, turns, finishes. Yeah. Where uh, I think we have gotten a lot better, but there's still a lot of a roof, uh, room to improve on. Yeah. Well, if it was perfect, I, I, everybody says I wouldn't do something if it was perfect. Yeah. Uh, what what would be like the best tips for an up and coming like mid distance distance swimmer to improve in training? To improve on training, I think uh, being consistent okay. that is one of the most important things. It's okay to have a bad session as well yeah. or bad weeks, uh, but you still have to come and put in the work. I think okay. you still get a lot of workout uh, or benefit from like bad workouts. Uh, yeah, and it's not just not just often training your body, but also your mind. And mm -hmm. if you keep doing that, the rest will come automatically. Okay. What? How? How would you get over like a bad session, meet or race? Um, I think it always depends when it is uh, for a bad session I think it's forgotten really quickly mm -hmm. um, I kind of leave the pool and what I try to do is like really make sure that for the next um, day uh, I'm ready to go again um, mm -hmm. and really try to focus on nut nutrition and recovery and really important as well is talk to your coach mm -hmm. um, and let him know because in the end it's like a two-way communication mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know uh, yeah obviously we saw the celebration and I always say uh after a celebration like that and winning world champ winning it being a world champion how did you <clears throat> obviously that was the first final of the meet um how did you move on and celebrate after that like to your next events um i think that was like i did two or three on the next day mm -hmm. uh which were which was a good race but not as good as the 400 so I missed the final and I was like 0 0.1 over my personal best. Mm. But I think um, what was really new for me was all the different things you have to do after yeah. uh, winning a gold medal. So first of all, um, the warm down is delayed. You have to do an award ceremony. Yeah. You have to do a drug test, blood and urine. Um, and then you are able to go to warm down. 
and everything just starts getting delayed by so much and then uh, a big part was just the emotional aspect um, yeah probably slept like two hours before the next day just because i was so happy and excited <laughs> of what i just experienced yeah that i woke up in the next morning with the big, biggest headache ever i was like oh my god how i'm gonna perform now <laughs> but yeah you just need to kind of find a way in dealing that and i think having experienced that situation now once uh, will definitely help me if there should be a second time okay uh i was gonna say uh what in training what would be your best set you ever done like most memorable Ooh. <laughs> for a hard question every set i beat dan um <laughs> 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 no i i think um the best i've done was a broken 400 we did it like two weeks out of the olympics i believe okay so i did 100 from the box where i think i went like uh we suited up um and it was on really short rest so we did a 100, a 200, and a 100 um, broken swim. And I do remember starting out like 51 or 52, I believe. I'm not sure. But that was short course meters. And the yeah. middle 200 was a 149 push <laughs> with really short rest. And then finishing. We were in skins. Yeah. yeah. And then finishing in a 51 again, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> that was fast. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, no one likes your favourite set. <laughs> uh, you had a great race there, and um, you got a big PB as you said, but would be anything you'd change in the race? Um, I do not really like my last 25. Uh, I think I get quite short, and yeah. I mean, I was very tired, and this was the end of the race, but I still wish that would have been a little bit better. I think yeah. that's where I could have improved on. Yeah, yeah. me and Felix have a great game where we practice the last five <laughs> metres of every rep, where we race everything. <laughs> Great game. Uh, what would you tell your younger self, uh, like young Felix? Young Felix. Um, <laughs> young, young Otto. <laughs> young Otto. Really young Otto. Young um, Otto. I don't think I would have expected being where I am and what I've done in swimming mm -hmm. at that age. I think I always dreamed of it, but I didn't think it was that close. Okay. Um, and I, I, don't, it's a hard question because I feel like. It's, I would definitely tell myself it is worth it. It doesn't matter you go through. Mm -hmm. um, and it, at the end of the day, we'll see success. Um, and start believing also in the really hard times. Okay. And you're not getting better. Because yeah. um, I think the, the experience I made was... I saw my uh, best time in 2017 in the Fortnite freestyle. Mm -hmm. And then my best time again was in 2021. Yeah. But so that was like four years of not swimming my best time, often being really close. But um, I mean, at the end, I swam the best time at the biggest meet of my life mm -hmm. and became fourth at the Olympics. So mm -hmm. even though that sucks, it was probably really important to keep going and getting the fourth place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're all very happy you stayed on too. <laughs> uh, what would be your average mileage a week, would you say? I think yeah. 70, 70 to 75. Yeah. Barely go over 70, um, mm -hmm. rarely be under 70. So, yeah, that's pretty much standard for me. Okay. Is that, is 400 for your, like, main event, would you say? Yeah, I do like the 400 the most because it's a good combination of, like, going hard, um, but not going too long. Mm -hmm. So, you, know, you need, like, that speed um, to start to finish, uh, start and finish the race. Okay. But you also need a lot of endurance work um, to maintain that. So, mm -hmm. I think it's a good race with a good challenge. Yeah. Uh, obviously quite well traveled now uh, with swimming. Where Where's the best pool you've ever swam in? Oh, in the, the best world? pool. I think the Tokyo Olympic pool is really cool. Mm -hmm. um, I really like the Budapest pool as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there are so many different pools. I've, obviously those pools are really nice because they're so new. Um, and we were basically the first ones being able to swim in there and no one else ever competed there. But there are like a lot of old historic pools, which I also really like, um, mm -hmm. with a lot of history, like yeah. the IOPOI pool in Indianapolis or the 1936 Olympic pool. Mm -hmm. So I think that's also really cool locations um, where they're still being swum in every day. Yeah. Um, so how do you get away from swimming on your days off? Uh, apart from today, obviously, because you're, you're with me. I'm going to talk about swimming, but... Uh, what I do, um, I still study, so that takes a lot of time away. And then pretty much we do, I don't know, I think I do read, uh, watch TV, but pretty much the day is already taken over with two yeah. training sessions yeah. <laughs> and going to uni. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, 
What kind of gym, like stuff would you do in the gym? Would it be like light or? Um, I didn't really like gym that much ever, um, but I think I've gotten really used to it and do quite enjoy it at this point, the mm -hmm. older I get. And because there was a lot of areas where I could get better really easily um, yeah. without actually really have to try new things. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so I, we have a really good SNC coach here and we do three gyms a week. And I think we're doing a lot of work on um, yeah, getting strength in the arms and legs as well as getting a really good mm -hmm. uh, trunk stability and, this, and shoulder yeah. work um, because we swim so much to prevent injuries. So those are like our three main aspects what we do in a gym. Would you say like the COVID pandemic, uh, like just no competitions is training the whole time has helped you a lot? Yeah, I think it was, um, I do believe that I was, I am much better after COVID than I was before COVID mm -hmm. and having this like two month break or three month with maybe not even thinking about a competition, but still training and being in shape, mm -hmm. just kind of like close the chapter and open another one again yeah. um, and yeah got rid of expectations and then just get, got back to basics and that was really good so what was your experience from the isl season um so i did one isl season season two in budapest the quarantine isl season mm -hmm. um i think it was really important for me getting a lot of racing against good opponents in a short time um, especially in the olympic year where there was barely any racing before yeah I was well organized, the races were a lot of fun, and yeah, I think at that point was definitely the right decision to do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I uh, Well, I'll, you'll be going to the World Champs, I guess, because the ISL is on at the same time. Yeah, so I will go to this year to the World Championships in Budapest. Mm -hmm. um, that's my main focus for this summer. Okay. Yeah, well, we have like Commonwealth Games. Yeah. Austria don't have that. Yeah. What, what would be the like, equivalent of that, or do we not? We don't have it. So I think European Championships is like. Uh, yeah. The most, yeah. So obviously you went three finals at the Olympics and you placed uh what's this what? fourth, seventh and seventh. Seven. So you did come last in the yeah. final. <laughs> and you made all three. I think there's hardly any nothing at the first. Yeah, because uh, it was the first time it was the eight hundred. Thank thanks for the eight hundred two in the Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so I was obviously I was in Tokyo too, so I know what the experience was like, but um did you enjoy it while you were there? Yeah, it was good. Um, I didn't get to enjoy it as much as I wish I could have um, without Not as COVID. Much as me. Yeah, <laughs> so I, I swam on the first day and on the last day, and then left the following day. Yeah. So I never had really time just uh, kind of relaxing and shutting off. It was very high intensity throughout that week I was there, and um, yeah, really happy with my results. Took a little while to realize how well I did and happy yeah. to be happy with it because the disappointment of the fourth place was a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. But overall, like great Olympic Games, and yeah, just wish it would have been open to the public. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. So it was I. Well, obviously, this is my first time Olympics. Your second time was it better the second time? Yeah. Uh, performance wise, it was definitely better. Um, I mean, the first Olympics, I was uh, very young, and it was just great being there. The goal was just making it, yeah. and yeah, as well as just from the organization, the second ones in Tokyo, the village was nicer. Um, everything was better organized. Um, Rio had different advantages. I mean, it was nice, nicer weather. Um, it was yeah. so humid in Tokyo. Yeah. So and we were able to do everything we wanted to in Rio. So. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, probably the perfect Olympics 2024 in Paris, um, yeah. have a mix of both of them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, did you get, did you do any of the free stuff at Olympics, like get a haircut? Or no, something? um, I didn't go to get the haircut every day. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what did I do? I got the free shoes. Yeah. Basic yeah. shoes. Yeah. Um, and oh, uh, I'll, we'll put a picture on the screen of them. Yeah. And they don't fit me. Um, oh, no. they don't have my size. Because oh. I was, I, w I went to the last day. <laughs> oh, okay. And at the last day, like basically all bigger models were gone. Yeah. So my dad is wearing them now, and uh, they fit him. So yeah. I still got them. I went to the gift store. That's that's pretty much it. They yeah. Do you wanna, yeah, gift store. <laughs> <laughs> do you wanna uh, tell us the story of what happened to your Olympic phone? Oh yeah. So. <laughs> Everybody gets a phone at the Olympics. Yeah. It was a Samsung. I don't know the make. S twenty one. Yeah. 
and I, I thought it would be a good idea to selling it online, um, making a little <laughs> bit of money off it. But basically, some hackers created a website which looked identically to like the Royal Bank of Scotland. <laughs> so when I wanted to transfer the money, I like sent the phone, and they told me they will transfer it through the website. Um, my phone was sent, and the money never came. Yeah. So yeah, S sad sad thing that phone is gone. Yeah. yeah. I did go to the police and I reported it, and I have the address because I sent it to the straight address. And they said it's not enough evidence to do anything. So, I mean, yeah. I know where these people live. So maybe <laughs> watch out to get you. What is from the bad that then? Because that was a big talk about subject. Um, I think it was all right. It was just tiny. Yeah. Um, the room was tiny and the beds were really narrow. I feel like there was not, if you would roll around once, you would already be on the floor. Yeah. You had your own room, didn't you, to yourself? Yeah, yeah. I did have an own room and I had an extension on my bed as well oh. to make it taller, bigger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did uh, you get our privilege? <laughs> <laughs> so it was like an extra, extra paper box at the end. Oh, okay. <laughs> with like a small <laughs> mattress, like this big, yeah. which they put there, which essentially didn't do anything because it fell off all the time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what did you think of the food? I know because we were down the post on the vlogs over there, the food. What did you think of it? I think it is okay. Um, it was better than Rio, but especially with those meats, um, you have to get used to having the same food every single day, maybe sometimes twice a day, the same meal. Mm -hmm. And you can't stop fueling yourself just because you're bored of the food. You still have to keep eating yeah. and have to like provide the best for your body in that time. So I'm um, very glad at the end when I left and was able to eat something else. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think there's for everyone something there what you can eat. I know. Um... Uh, oh god, but it was a nice to have your home coach uh, at the Olympics. Yeah, it was nice to have Andy there. Um, we also lived in the same flat, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I think it is important to have your own coach, um, especially when you go through those probably most stressful time of your life. Um, yeah. and having someone you are familiar with and you work with every day. How did you like kill time in between? Um, to be honest, just sleep, and uh, there wasn't really much time in between. Um, yeah, when I had a session off, I, I would usually race the next day again. Okay. So I, um, I think out of those nine days, I was swimming like six. Yeah. So, yeah, it was really, um, not, a, not a lot of time in between the sessions. And if I had rest, just, we had a training session. Yeah. So that me and Felix have very different Olympic experiences. <laughs> Mine was a four day of celebrating after I finished. <laughs> Yeah, the last time I went, I was there for like two more weeks. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Imagine Paris then. Yeah. And it will be close as well. Yeah. No long flight will be nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, yeah. I wonder what they do with the... Oh, well, I know you... Oh, we asked about the pre-camp. Oh, I just don't know what to ask. So, uh, so I actually just fill out a survey for the next Olympics uh, food selection. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What do you put in there? Well, I mean, that's yeah, so a different. Like turmeric pasta. Uh, <laughs> it's, about, it's our famous dish. There'll be a cookbook soon. <laughs> um, probably oh, the other one. One dish. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so I fill it out, and it's like they were asking so many questions, like, "Do you want like like French food in there, or do you want a mix of everything mm. and stuff like that?" So I think they are trying to focus on food, so, and also where they the focus on sustainability as well of food, and like where the food comes from. Uh, which I didn't think they'd be doing much of, but obviously yeah. the French are looking into how to save the planet. Um, so a lot of teams go on um, pre-camps, uh, like, well, in Japan, I guess, uh, but you went for a different route with your um, pre-camp. Can you tell yeah. us what you did? So the plan was to go on pre-camp as well, but we were unlucky and our pre-camp got cancelled. And so what we do, did, we stayed here at Loughborough and adjusted here for the time zone. Mm -hmm. So we started, I believe, 10 days out or so and mm. started switching um one hour a day uh, i think the first two days we did 30 minutes and then one hour before but um that also included training times yeah so usually we swim like seven o'clock or so in the morning so uh, the next day it was six it was five it was four it was three so yeah we really went down all the way and last day getting up i think i got up at 11 p.m so that is, was my wake up time. So we were really good adjusted when we got there. Yeah. I feel it's when I'm a bit midnight shopping too. Yeah. yeah so so. Tesco is open. So. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that helped a lot? The oh, yeah. Before you went? 
yeah, I think not being able to adjust, I uh, would not have been able to perform the way I did, um, especially that way. That means like if you have to get up at like 6 or 7 a.m., it would be midnight. And then yeah. when you race, it would be 3 a.m., mm -hmm. um, but yeah. it's really rough. So Had you been to Japan before uh, this week? I did go for a pre-camp for 2019 World Championships oh, in okay. Guangzhou. Yeah. Uh, uh, we would have gone to the same place and it was okay. Um, I mean, I did like Japan, but it is a hard place for pre camp I would say, because it is just so different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're on the quick fire round now, so oh. uh, uh, cats or dogs? Both. Both. <laughs> I, I don't think we've ever had that happen. No, so, no, no, no. Uh, hot or cold holiday destinations? Hot. Uh, favorite sport to watch or play? Not, uh, not swimming. Ooh. I would say watch baseball. I okay. like watching baseball. Play play is hard because I don't really do anything else. <laughs> <laughs> uh, favorite like food? Um, Wiener Schnitzel. Oh, <laughs> I was not expecting that. Uh, favorite TV show slash film? Uh, favorite TV show probably Seinfeld. Yeah, okay. Seinfeld. Good film. Uh, it's Max. A TV show. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, we keep that in. <laughs> uh, Max Bench. Uh, ninety-two point five. Uh, describe yourself in one word. Cool. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, short course or long course? Long course. Uh, favorite competition you've been to? Uh, World Championships Budapest 2017. Uh, at the Olympics, Tokyo or Rio? Tokyo. Uh, favorite fast food? Uh, wings. What, what's your favorite drill to do in something? My favorite drill is probably... Um, the one where I, I swim freestyle and I have my arms basically going forward on the water. So kind of like uh, when this is the water surface, I go like this. Yeah. So it's a full hand. I would try to do okay, that. So yeah. full hand. Yeah. The, would you wear first while doing this? Or? No. Just... I actually have to order a kit bag again. Oh yeah. They got stolen. What? Yeah. Yeah. My kit bag got stolen. I've been using Nathan's <laughs> for the past week. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. We have different training times, so it works out well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the chef's not full too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he told me I could use it. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Felix, and good luck in the world champs. Yeah. You know, June. Thank you. That was a lot yeah, of fun. June. Yeah. So yeah, please like, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you on our next video. Follow Felix in the links below. <laughs> Bye.